Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I'm 30 from the United Kingdom and I'm a crochet designer. And this channel of mine is all about the tribe connecting over yarny goodness, making moments and memories. Happy New Year, welcome to 2020. I hope you had a lovely New Year's Eve and I hope that this year brings you so many blessings. Today, this video is about my one word. So if you are following me on Instagram, and if you're not, go ahead and follow me. I am hosting a 21 day crochet challenge and the first prompt is new resolutions. And so I thought I would make this video to go along with it because I don't actually make a new resolution per se. I pick one word. So every year I pick one word to apply to my entire life as a sort of guiding principle. So I'm going to take you through that today. I'm going to talk about um, how I apply it in particular to my crochet. And then I've also made this little cute worksheet that you can download so that you can pick your own one word as well. I have kept a journal, which is the usual Dear Diary format, since I was about 16, and that is always an A4 lined notebook. I've got my current one here, and I stick bits and pieces in the front, um, mementos and whatnot, and I write in it as and when I need to, every other day usually. And I also have a planner. Um, some people have filofaxes or passion planners. Um, what I've started doing is getting a plain notebook. This one is squared paper. And I create my own layouts. The reason I do this is because I haven't found a planner that works for me and encompasses everything that I want to include in a layout that I like. At the end of every year, most people make New Year's resolutions. I don't make New Year's resolutions. Instead, I pick one word and I apply that throughout my year. So last year, my word was simplify. Prior to that, it was elevation, consistency, resilience, and so on and so on and so on. And it's something that I've done since 2012. Um, and the reason I prefer to pick one word is because it applies to all aspects of your life, from your career, to your hobby, to your health, to your finances. And so I thought I would sit and talk to you about it and show you how I pick my one word. My one word for 2019 was simplify. I picked simplify because it encompassed everything I was trying to achieve. Um, I was at a point where I wanted to eliminate just the rubbish and the excess from my life. I wanted to have a simpler routine. I really wanted to focus on what was important in my life. And I just wanted to make things easier for myself because my health hadn't been the greatest. And so I picked all, I wrote all of that down and then I picked the word simplify and I then applied it to all areas of my life. So throughout the year I had declutters, so I would reduce the amount of clothes I own and then I would do it again three months later. Same with my yarn stash, I used it to reduce my yarn stash. I helped eliminate the clutter in my house, which is amazing, from my bookshelves, getting rid of the books that I didn't really enjoy or have the time for, to make room to have a really fancy display of the ones that I really, really love and really want to read as well. Um, I also applied it to my cleaning routine, 
because I had less belongings, cleaning took less time, um, and I just sort of set a very simple routine throughout the week so that the house is just always pretty much tidy, unless I haven't done the dishes, you know, you know. And I also applied it to my crochet, of course. Because I had more time, because I wasn't cleaning as much, tidying as much, had more time to crochet, which meant that I made a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of granny squares last year. I think I'm gonna count it up just to see how many I made. Because in my granny square curtain alone, I know there was about 500 or so. So that was all thanks to Simplify. I also created a morning routine so that I could focus on what was important. So I really got a lot from that word and I will continue to bring it forward with me in many ways because I will still be decluttering and I'll still keep everything relatively simple in my life and just focus on what's really, really important. So this year I, I picked my word quite early on actually in 2019, well quite, 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 quite. I picked my word in October 2019. Um, it came to me because I was journaling and I wrote down like um, a list of things I wanted to encompass and then my word came forward. So my one word for 2020 is enough. And I have picked that word because it encompasses, as I said, everything I want to channel. And so what I did was I made a journal page, which is here and I'll insert some footage for you to see. And I quite simply wrote down, in 2020, I want to use what I have, reduce, reuse, create security, financial freedom, release myself from doubt, enjoy where I am, be, do, break past cycles, start building, and then I put, I've had enough, no more, and then I've put discipline and courage, and I circled the word enough. So then what I do from there is I define my word enough. Now if I'd have written down all of those buzzwords in my first box and then the word hadn't really come to me, I would sometimes look online um, and you can download or even have a look online at lists of other people's one words to give the inspiration. Um, or I would go online and if, say for example, the word reuse or recycle was in my head but I didn't want to use recycle, I would look at um, a thesaurus online to get the synonyms for that word. So my word made itself quite apparent. Don't worry if yours doesn't come out straight away if you choose to find one. Um, you might just need to put a little bit of thinking into it and ask other people um, if you feel comfortable to do so. So I then defined the word enough um, and it actually had quite a few definitions which I liked because it makes it really applicable to all areas of my life. Um, so it can be a, used as a determiner which um, quantifies or qualifies how much. So it would mean as much as you need or as necessary, um, which is really important to me because I really feel like I have everything I need and everything that is necessary for my life right now. Um, so I don't need to be buy more or consuming more. I really, really want to use what I already have because I'm so blessed with so many amazing like bookshelves full of amazing books and yarn. We all know I have so much yarn. Um, and then it can also, the word enough can also be used as an adverb. Um, so it can be used um, to say moderate or a certain degree. So you could say, I have enough of this or I think I have enough of this, something like that. Um, and then I looked at the synonyms and it came up with ample, adequate, full, sufficient, abundant, comfortable, complete. And I thought, yes, spot on. So what I then do from there is I will have a look on Pinterest for some quotes. I love me some quotes. Um, and I will make a Pinterest board with them all on and I'll write some of them out in this little journal page as well just so that I can add them into my planners and whatnot and reflect on them find it really useful if you want to implement something in your life to have it visible 
and for it to surround you. Um, and I also look for affirmations. So if your head is having one of those moments, you know, where it's giving it that and it doesn't shut up, you can repeat the affirmations and you can then quieten or get rid of that yappy voice in the back of your head. So say for example, I, let's make it up, I was looking at my bookshelf and I thought, I don't have enough books and so I want to buy some more and while I'm at it I'm going to buy some more yarn. I could repeat my affirmation, I have enough, I have everything I need, I could keep repeating them and then I'd be like, no, I'm not buying any more yarn, I'm not buying any more books. And you could do the same, so you could pick a word. Say for example, you wanted to pick. Say for example, you wanted to pick sparkle and you got up that day and you just felt like it was a dull day and you looked at yourself and you thought, oh, just feel a bit drab. You could have some affirmations and some quotes around you and you could repeat things like, um, be the sparkle or anything like that so that you then put that one word back into focus and you put your mindset onto the right track. I mean, that was a little bit of a cliche, a little bit of a cliche, um, naff example but you get my drift and then what I did from there on my worksheet well in my journal which I've made into a worksheet I then wrote my manifesto so within that I basically flesh out what I wrote in the first box of the buzzword and then I also put a prayer in there as well um, so you could give thanks to the universe or whatever being you um, believe in or you could just simply give thanks to yourself and support yourself if you wanted to. So I did all of that on this really cool double page on my journal, um, which is really cool because this journal is going through into 2020 with me um, because it still has plenty of blank pages, so I'm not gonna start another one. So I quite like that. Um, I've now copied it out so that it is the first page of 2020. So it's all good. Um, and then the final thing that I do personally is then I apply it to different areas of my life. Um, so overall I've got like the guiding principles that, it, that the word enough it has. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Slow down. So for me, I'm a really visual person. I love to be surrounded by photos and pretty things and quotes everywhere and I work really well by plotting things out, writing them out and having a visual display um, and so to really enhance that I make myself a vision board and this is one of the ways that you can apply uh, your one word to your year. So number one would be to make a vision board. Do you know what I'd say number one is get my worksheet number two to apply it to your life would be make a vision board. Before I moved out of my parents house four years ago I made my vision boards in my journal because they go everywhere that I go. Um, then I moved out and I had all this wall space so I for the last three years have made my vision boards and uh, they are framed and they're on the walls in my bedroom and that's great and I love that but this year I've decided to go back to my journal just because it goes everywhere that I go as I said um, it means that I can be on my lunch break at work and have a quick look at it and it also means that my walls aren't going to get too clogged up because I now have three on my wall and it feels ever so slightly stagnant because they are the goals from the previous three years so I'm actually going to take those out of their frames, add them into my journals um, and then reframe some different artwork. So you could make your vision board on a piece of A4 paper, frame it for the year and at the end of the year then put it in your journal if you wanted to or do what I've done and leave it out for a few years. So this year's vision board, what I did was I got a lot of the quotes and images that I put on my Pinterest board I simply put them onto a Microsoft Word 
um, document, printed them out, cut it all out and then I created my vision board. The main part of my vision board is this quote that I found which is titled Enough and it says you have what it takes, you are strong enough, you are brave enough, you are capable enough, you are worthy enough. It's time to stop thinking otherwise and start believing in yourself because no one else has the dreams that you have. No one else sees the world exactly like you do and no one else holds the same magic inside. It's time to start believing in the power of your dreams, my lovely friend. Not next year, not next month, not tomorrow, but now you are ready. And then it says walk the earth. So I've put that in there and I will do some pan shots so that you can see all of this. I have, I love this little quote, purpose is an incredible alarm clock. Um, and then I have got some scripture and I've got different quotes. And then I was making different pages within, within this planner. And this is a little bit of crochet and one of the knitting images that didn't fit elsewhere. I'll give you a really quick flash. They didn't fit on that page and so I added it here which is nice because I do really want to focus on my crochet and my knitting this year. Um, so I then wrote out everything from my journal page into the, my planner just so that it's all there in one place. So I quite like it because it's in my it's in my journal and it's in my planner. So how am I applying this to crochet? I have a number of ways that my one word applies to my passion, crochet and yarn. This year, I have set myself the guideline to use what I have. And notice I said guideline. You need to make this fun and you need to make this something you want to work with. If you make this a strict rule, you're already going to put yourself in the mindset that this is not something you want to do. So make it a guideline, have fun with it and just flow with it. So my first guideline is use what you have. And that means that I I'm going to use as much of my stash as possible. I have set myself a rule that I'm not going to buy any more yarn unless it's to join a project such as a blanket or, you know, if you like a cardigan. If I want, say, 400 grams to put together granny squares, and I'm only going to be able to buy yarn if it's a yarn that I don't have f to make a project such as like a textured fluffy yarn or something like that then I will allow myself to buy it although I have said that that money has to come from HDDC so I won't be going wild because I'm going to earn that money before I spend it so I'm going to use what I have that is my guideline I have set out my exceptions as well which is also important because if you're like me I have five years worth of um, legal education behind me. If I want to negotiate, I can negotiate. And if I've put a guideline here, use what you have, I will then caveat it with A, B, C, D, all the way through and again, just to get what I want. So I've been quite strict with myself in that I've set some um, parameters on these guidelines just so I don't wriggle out of them myself. You've got to know yourself and you've got to work with it. Um, my other guideline is to live below my means which applied to crochet as I said I'm only going to buy yarn if HDDC has made the money so I will only buy yarn if HDDC has enough money in its account from Patreon and YouTube 
after paying for um, tech editors and the essentials like that. So I am going to live well within what I earn and that's really important overall for what I'm trying to accomplish, which I will accomplish this year. And then my other parameter guideline is to give thanks. So rather than looking at all of my yarn thinking, I've got so much yarn, I don't want to use any of it, I'm going to turn that into, I have so much yarn and I'm so thankful. And if there is some yarn that I don't really like, I'm going to gift it onto someone so it can bless someone else. So it's just about switching your mindset, flipping it around to give gratitude. I have more than enough yarn. I did have a little wobble this morning and think maybe I should just go and stock up just in case, but I don't need to. I am not missing out on anything. I have more than enough yarn. And if I really, really need something, I, then I will go out and get it. For right now, I am going to enjoy exactly what I have. Um, another way you can apply your word to your crochet in particular is you can change your password say to your love crochet um, account you can change it to something like enough 2020 so that when you log in you will then have to repeat well you have to type out your word and that should prompt you to think do I really need this? Um, so that's one other way you can help focus yourself. Um, and then another way you can apply your word to your crochet is So another way I'm going to apply my word this year is that I am going to with abstain, withhold, limit the amount of um, equipment I buy for YouTube. I am going to use what I have. I have a very primitive setup but it is more than adequate and every now and then I will go and buy something else. So for this entire year I'm going to just use what I have and then I've created a page in my planner and I am going to write everything in there as and when I see it that I would like to get and, else, and that also applies to my yarn and at the end of the year I can decide if I want to get anything because by then I would have saved quite a bit of money because I won't have been spending which is a real big part of my enough um, and so then I can choose to get what will really help me whereas at the moment I am sort of just buying as and when um, but with that time passing by I will be able to say this tripod will really really help this lighting will really really help because if you work with a current setup for, for quite a while you start to identify ways you can improve it so that's what I'm going to be doing um, Another way I'm applying enough to my crochet is I have said enough is enough, you are going to sit this through, you're going to work it out and you're going to get your patterns released, whatever that block is, enough's enough. You're going to have the discipline and the courage and you're going to get this done. <sighs> So that's my one word and that is the ways in which I'm applying it to my crochet in 2020. I hope I've not said 2019 at any point by accident in this video. I wonder. 2020. If you want to see more of my planner setup, I am more than happy to do a page, a page, a video on it. Um, Journals are a huge part of my life and eventually I want to be able to produce my own 
um, planners and journals so that they work for crocheters and knitters and makers. Um, for now, I am more than happy to set my own up within a notebook. Um, so this is a blush pink squared notebook um, from Paper Chase. And what I do every year is I create a front page with things that I find really motivational. Um, and then I create my vision board for my word. And then I set out the months, I set out trackers for my saving, my spending. Um, I've got all sorts of lists in here. So um, books I want to read, books I want to buy. And then this year I've done it slightly differently, which I'm already loving. The back is more des designated dedicated to HDDC so I've put my YouTube banner which I love here I've got my business card and I've got Tiana there um, and that says this is how we do it and then I have got my vision board for HDDC um, which has got amazing images of it's just got these images whenever I look at them I just get really giddy and excited because it's it just encapsulates everything that I'm working towards it's so pretty and it's so cute and then I've got printouts um, the page I quickly showed you of um, images that I find really inspiring so there's lots of granny squares on there I didn't put too much of other people's work for granny squares because I find them that it Dulls my own creative voice but I have put a couple of images there that I just they make me want to snuggle up in blankets um, and then I've got some I've got a quote that says reduce repair recycle repurpose reclaim which is really in line and in sync with enough um, so yeah and then there's knitwear there and it looks amazing so if you want to see a any more videos on my planner set up let me know below I am more than happy to do that for you I've also got in the back here um, project ideas and a list and granny square project ideas and they've got a list granny squares I've got that many ideas it needed its own list outside of my other ideas um, and I've got a list of patterns that I've published so far it's got adventure on it and if you want to get yourself a free copy of that, if you use Thank You 2019 um, in my Ravelry checkout, you can download that as a thank you for 2019. I've also got a list of patterns from other designers I want to use. So yes, this is already very well used and very much loved. And I'm more than happy to show you my previous setups because I've got... This is 2019, this is 2018's um, planners, 2020, and I could probably fish out most of them heading back to 2020 and show you really cool pages in them, such as, I love this page, it's got studded converse, it says rebel rebel, and that quote says, we do not change the world when we whisper, we change it when we roar. So that is my one word for 2020 and how I'm applying it to crochet. I'm more than happy to tell you how I'm applying it to the rest of my world as well. I don't know if you're just here for the yarny goodness or not, but by doing this, I really, really, um, every year, I really focus and improve my crochet every year without fail. Um, and this is why I do this setup every year without fail. And so that you could do the same, I have created a um, worksheet which I will put some images on the screen for you. And it's just got four boxes on it. It's a really simple layout and it's the layout that I use, so it's tried and tested for over eight years now. Um, and if you follow the layout on that then you'll be able to come up with your own one word you'll also be able to come out with um, some affirmations in your manifesto and then you'll be able to put together your own vision board now that is available for free on my patreon 
so my patreon link is below and I will put it in there as a nice um, downloadable PDF and you can use it you can print it and you can use it every year because I didn't actually put 2020 on it so it'll be applicable for every year forevermore um, so I know now that I've got that next year I will print that off and fill it out um, and then I'll stick that into my journal in a handy pretty little sheet so if you download that let me know if you want to of course what your one word is or if you've already picked one then let me know um, somebody commented on my video from this time last year where I spoke about my one word and she had the same one word so that's pretty cool uh, and I always like hearing what other people have chosen because you never know that word might inspire me um, for years to come so happy making moments and memories and have fun with your one word and I will see you again soon Take care, tribe. I think that's everything. You think it's everything? I think it's everything. If it's not, then I'll let you know. I've got an hour one hour so in that hour i need to have a shower tidy up the house Ew. Uh, schedule my patreon post and edit this and crochet y'all crochet 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 so i'm gonna make a list in my planner and do it